And so it was done. Little Thunderhoof and the other buffalo saved by Walking Coyote and his family passed into the care of Mikel Pablo. There in the shadow of the mountains by the Flathead River, the buffalo found a good home. Soon Mikel Pablo went into partnership with Charles Allard, another rancher who remembered the time of the buffalo. The Pablo Allard herd grew into the hundreds. For many years, Walking Coyote, his family, and the Salish people looked with pride at the herd that held their spirit. It reminded them of the time that they and the buffalo had shared the land. As they listened to the rumble of buffalo hooves in the valley, from somewhere between the earth and the sky, it seemed they could hear a song. Hetcha hey, hetcha ho, hetcha hey, yay ho. Wista Shinchalapi, Samuel Walking Coyote, passed on in 1897, Mary in 1901. The Pablo Allard herd continued to grow and thrive on the Flathead Indian Reservation. Then the United States government announced in 1907 the reservation would be open to white settlers and the valley broken up into small allotments of land. The free range needed for the buffalo to graze would no longer exist. Pablo and Allard offered to sell their herd to the government, but Congress failed to approve the deal. Finally, the Canadian government agreed to purchase the herd. The roundup began in 1906, but it was difficult getting the buffalo loaded onto railroad freight cars. In 1909, the last animals that could be caught were put on a train. Those that were not captured were left behind on the Flathead Reservation. In all, about 700 buffalo were shipped 1,200 miles to Buffalo National Park in Alberta, Canada. Walking Coyote was not the only one credited with helping to save the buffalo from extinction. Several far-sighted groups and individuals in the late 19th century and early 20th century worked to preserve the wild buffalo. These included the Smithsonian Institution, the New York Zoological Society, and the American Bison Society. President Theodore Roosevelt set aside land for three reserves for the preservation of the buffalo, which led to the establishment of the National Bison Range in Montana in 1908. The United States government bought back from Canada some of the Pablo Allard herd to live on the National Bison Range. Today, the buffalo are no longer endangered. Descendants of walking coyotes, orphans, and the Pablo Allard herd can be found in many protected natural areas in the United States. In addition to the National Bison Range, these include Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge in Oklahoma, Sully's Hill National Game Preserve in North Dakota, and Neil Smith National Wildlife Refuge in Iowa. In fact, thanks to Walking Coyote and all the others who labored to save the buffalo, there are now free roaming and ranched herds of varying sizes in almost every state and on many American Indian reservations. The commercial bison industry started in the late 1950s and began to grow rapidly in the 1980s when demand increased for buffalo meat as a tasty and healthy alternative to beef. Current estimates place the size of the total United States herd at about 250,000 animals. Although the great herds of yesterday will never again roam across North America, the buffalo are now abundant enough to ensure the continued well-being of this important spiritual and cultural American symbol for generations to come. And that is the story. So this is a real thing that happened, but a lot of the story was told from person to person to person, which makes it a different kind of American folklore. This is a Native American folk tale that they tell about one family who helped to save all the buffalo. There may not have been any if this had not happened, according to Native American legend. I hope you enjoyed Buffalo Song. A challenge for you today, this song that calmed the buffalo down, Hetcha Hey, Hetcha Ho, Hetcha Hey, Yay Ho. I would love to see if you can come up with your own song that could calm down a buffalo, and make it go to sleep at night. Can you come up with a lullaby? Either write it down and send it to me or film yourself singing it. I would love to see if you decide to accept the challenge. I hope you enjoyed Buffalo Song. 
This was the last of our American folk tales. Can you think of some things that were the same about some of them? John Henry, born with a hammer in his hand, or Paul Bunyan, who grew to be the size of tall buildings, basically, by the time he was a few years old, or um, Davy Crockett, who sailed, on, who sailed on a sea serpent. All of these really make, make people sound maybe stronger, bigger, fiercer than they actually were. And that's what made them the, the subjects of these tall tales. I hope you've enjoyed our little summer study of tall tales and the continuation of first grade just a little bit. I really want to hear from all of you. I'd love to hear from you. Please send me, a, send me a little email telling me what you're doing. I can't wait to hear from you. You have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.